Hello and thank you for joining us on the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, transport operators blind Lagos, Abuja and not lament rising cases of kidnapping, robbery on the highways, threatened strike as troops launch manhunt for leaders of bandits and others in Abuja, Kaduna Road. Nigeria Army debunks CNN story alleging shooting of light bullets at NSAS protesters by soldiers at Lekki Togate. Governor Diri waves only branch after Supreme Court verdict on Bayasa governorship election, says litigants are not his enemies. And later on the show, Nigeria Embassy suspends security officials over allegations of sexual abuse. I'll be hanging out with Martin Oloja and Adekunle Yusuf. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Glad to have you join us. The passengers are deserting the Kaduna Abuja ex-highway over rising cases of kidnapping is no longer news. Now, transport operators applying Lagos, Abuja and other parts of the north are threatening to embark on a nationwide strike if insecurity on the highway is not addressed. The operators lament that it has become too dangerous to ply the routes due to security challenges posed by bandits. Meanwhile, troops attached to the land and air component of the Operation Thunder Strike have launched a manhunt for kidnapped kingpin, popularly known as Major and other bandits terrorizing travelers on the highway. Let me start with you, Adekule Yusuf. For some time now, this has been you know, on the news in terms of the security challenges we have on that Abuja, Kaduna Express Road. And lately, it came down to the southwest and major highways now are now like under siege because of bandits. It's so unfortunate, and, uh, but I'm not surprised because when you look at this time of every year. Okay. Yes, you this time. With, um, this, there is always an is increase in movement of human beings, vehicles, and you know, December months, you know now. Mm. But insecurity has always been with us. It's only that at this moment, it escalates. We look at last year, this same story we are talking about, you know. That was the same picture last year. If you look at people who travel from Lagos to the southeast, all the parts of southeast, people travel from here to the south south, people who travel from here, you know, to the north, people who travel from the north down to Abuja and you know downwards to the south. So they've been facing, you know, very serious, you know, times. Their businesses, those who do the business, you know, you know, they have the luxury arm of the transport, you know, scheme. People who use uh, Marco Polo buses, people who use exotic, you know, big pig. Yeah. So, their their businesses at this time that are supposed to be booming, so they face the opposite because you have several, you know, bandits, you have several kidnappers, you have, you know, harm robbers, virtually everywhere. If you go from here to rivers, you know there are there are areas in River State, you know, I mean East West Road, all those things, you know, that opened up, mm -hmm. that opens up that you know section of the country to other part of the country, it's always a flashpoint. When you move from here, you are going to Abuja. The moment you are reaching or uh, reaching uh, local Jaxis, you know, you are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Then when you leave Abuja, and you are going to Kaduna. I was in Kaduna this year and I wanted to come to Abuja and I had a big man begging me that please I shouldn't do it by road, that I should go and do train. Unfortunately, I tried the train, I mean, it's already overbooked and I needed to be in Abuja that same day. I took the risk and luckily for me. <laughs> so, so when you now leave that act, Abuja, uh, Kaduna, it's like, you, when you want to do it today, many people in the North believe that you, are, you want to commit suicide. Mm -mm. No, it's totally unsafe. Now, when you not leave Kaduna, you want to go further, you know, in, this, in the North. Oh my God, you are facing, <laughs> you want to commit, you know, you want to kill yourself because what you see is, when you go to the president, you know, state in Kassam, Kassam. 
the story is not palatable. There is a generous feeling of insecurity all over Nigeria now. Mm. Masses, I don't know. We are moving towards the Yota period, yeah. and we expect people to be going to their hometowns, villages, and everything. And to see if the situation, our security operatives kind of they're overwhelmed with this. With several challenges that are facing them right now. Now to add kidnappers and bandits to the scheme, it's very, very alarming. It's very, very alarming. But you know this one, if the one uh, from Abuja to Kaduna is alarming and uh, if people are not safe uh, on that axis, the capital of the nation where the president and all the security chiefs are located, um, then that's a problem, a big problem. You know, he has just given a, 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 just a rundown on uh, all the routes in Nigeria, which used to be northeast and all those uh, routes, uh, Yobe, uh, mm. Brono, and then Adamawa. But now, we want to go <laughs> anywhere <laughs> from the political capital of the north, the, when the regional Kaduna, Kaduna then and the Niger. nation's capital. You are not safe. You can't. And then, for so many years, it's not about you, Tide. For so many years now, the stories have become they are looking for one kingpin. Mm. And then uh, there was the one, this one that happened recently, and then so many editorials, so many commentaries on, on that one that uh, the, uh, the Navy SEALs from the US just came, they did the operation and left. But we cannot learn any lesson. We, we don't have the capacity to do that, to get a kingpin. And, uh, you know, this is not, a, we, we, we keep lamenting, and there is no solution. We keep suggesting what to do. But it should, it's a very dangerous signal to the people that where the people who run the country are located. And then the president himself is a resident of Kaduna, and that is the political capital of the north. And then most of the security chiefs that we are talking about are also from the north. And if they cannot take care of uh, security between Kaduna, the political capital of the north, and the nation's capital, where all of them are located. And I think that we don't need to run so much commentary on, to say that this is an emblem of shame. Hmm. Solution. What and what can the government do to actually... Well, I feel, I feel embarrassed when you tell me that uh, uh, the military is now, you know, starting a manhunt. Uh, we, have, we are blessed. This is a country that is blessed with how many security organizations? You have the police, massive workforce. You have the army, the navy, the air, the, the, the air force. You have the civil defense. There are so many security organizations. What are they really doing in terms of intelligence gathering? We are in a age that things are easier to do today because of current gadgets that we have. The criminals don't live in the sky, they live among us. What are we doing? We don't behave as if we are really in charge because we should be in charge. Today, I believe governance is easier because there are so many things you can predict. You can follow certain threats because you have access to some of these gadgets that can help you to monitor a lot of movements in and out, a lot of things up and down. And from there, you predict and you act proactively. We have not been seeing that. And I'm really, each time we talk about it, I'm not happy. Why should we be talking about insecurity every day? And instead of the issue to subside, it keeps getting worse. So what should the government do? Government should work harder. That what they are doing is not enough. Nigerians are not happy with their efforts. Because you can tell me you are doing your best. But when your best is not good mm. enough, mm. You, it means you have to, <laughs> you have to <laughs> increase your capacity. You have to double, double your effort if it's possible. You, you need to do better. From what we have now, this is a time when, you know, human and vehicular activities, we move towards the peak. It will be so 
it will be so dangerous to allow criminals to take over our highways. So, and I believe the government will not, you know, be happy to have that to happen. So, to make sure this doesn't happen, yeah. all our security organizations should be put on board. When we say the military, military, we are overburdening our military. Mm -hmm. sure. There are a lot of things we, need, we don't need to involve the military. What is the DSS doing? Intelligence gathering? What is the police doing? What is the civil defense doing? What, many other ones. So <coughs> we need them, all of them. And combined efforts. Uh, combined efforts, not just only the military. We've been so unfair to our soldiers. Believe me, I don't know of any country that is like that is so unfair to its own soldiers as we do in Nigeria. Yeah. If a woman, I mean, if a woman and a husband has a quarrel, we want to call in the military. Mm -hmm. If a little this and that, we mm -hmm. still talk about the military. That should stop. Or mm -hmm. internal security, we should give it to those who should handle internal security. That's what the question says. That's why we get them. That's why we are paying them. That's why they should do their job. Okay, let me pick my first caller. Ola is calling us from Texas. Texas, United States of America. Thank you for joining us, Ola. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Good evening. Yeah, I want to contribute to the discussion that you guys are having right now. All right, go ahead, Ola. Um, I want to agree with my uncle there on the left hand side, the one with ties. He said that um, the government is really, it's a shameful thing what is going on. Let's be honest with ourselves. The government, from federal level to the least level of local government, they are all failed in their responsibility. It's a good thing you are talking about this, but the truth about it is that. Until there is a drastic change from the top down, nothing will get better. It's so unfortunate because we are looking at the news, we keep seeing things every now and then, and we are, we are not safe yet too because our people are not most are dead. We are not happy on the news that's happening there. So it's just, it's just, it's just a pity story. But you guys keep doing what you are doing, but until there is a drastic change, there's no solution. Thank, no thank you, Ola. Yes. Thank you for your contribution. Martins, it's just like what we are looking at now. This is not even the economy. This is um, security. And um, I think it's a basic, it's a basic um, responsibility of the government as enshrined in the 1999 Constitution to be able to guarantee the safety of life and properties in a situation whereby you know, bandits are giving people an ultimatum not to cultivate, uh, not to uh, cultivate uh, their, uh, their harvest for the year, except they give 10 million naira. I've forgotten that state. Yes. Bandits wrote to the villagers yes. that accept their okay. settles, that there's no how these people should go and harvest. Yes. And you know, that's why I was wondering why you were saying that it's not the economy. It has something to do with the economy because uh, the, one of the consequences... The economy cannot flourish. <laughs> yes, it cannot flourish. The consequences, in the first instance, we are, you, you, before you know it, now some governors will go to some of these Western countries to look for foreign direct in, uh, investors. Where will, which investor will come to a place like this? And then we are talking about this now. We have been reporting and it's been analyzed here several times that uh, most of the farmers in the north cannot go to farm. Hmm and it will affect food security in the long run. Now, just as you were saying, it's written boldly in the Constitution. They say it's not justiciable. That even if it is not justiciable, it's a, it's a fact, the metal of the law, that welfare and security of the people mm -hmm. shall be the primary purpose of government mm -hmm. all the time. You say it, they don't care about this thing, and I think that uh, it is high time they began to address this insecurity. Incidentally, it's one of the two, two uh, point agenda of the federal government, of the president, the insecurity and the fighting corruption. This particular one now, you cannot do anything except people feel that they are secure in their country. You want to go for Christmas, you want to go for anything now. You know that you, there is no road to your village. What do you do? You stay where you are. But the unfortunate thing about this is this uh, inability to get to the farm. If people cannot go to farm, what, are we going to pray? Are we going to look for miracles to get food? You know what it means if we cannot get certain items from the north to even this Lagos. 
it, it, it has consequences on food security. And I think that people, the duty bearers, people who have authority to run the affairs of this country, should, 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 should brace up to solve this problem. How many commentaries are we going to run? How many editorials will be written on security architecture? Do this, do that, change your this, change chiefs, change this, Talk to your people before you know it now. You say that security chiefs are meeting with the leader of this country. But at the end of the day, nothing happens. And I think that they should continue to get worried about inability to solve this problem. Mm. And the of the transporters now, because there's no how the business can move. You have all these big, big companies that are into luxury services and some of them, you know, um, some of them, they find it very difficult now to move just alone. Some of them, at the point in time, when they get to a certain place, they have to wait for other um, transport I know companies. The, I know the and they, they move in convoy and everything. But still, they're still afraid that they, they'll be forced to go on strike. When, uh, that if it's becoming, this attack is becoming too frequent. I know many of them have closed down. Hmm. I, I know who are friends who run this, you know, all these huge Marco Polo buses going to the north. I know one that applies Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, every day, close down. I know many other ones mm. who go to the east. But because of insecurity and terrible state of the economy, mm. they close down. Mm. They come wrong again. You see, government should know that uh, insecurity determines a lot of things. It's not just safety of life, and then it's also the soul that guarantees the economy. You can't run any economy without security. So that's why the federal government needs to do more. Nigerians are not happy with their best. Their best is not good enough, and they should see it that way. Yeah. And even though many I have people... this caller. Okay. Um, Anthony is calling us from Ringim Jigawa State. Uh, I think we lost Anthony. Okay. Mm. So, until the government begins to see it, that uh, security is part of the economy. For example, the uh, luxury transport uh, sector, it's a multi-billion naira, you know, mm. industry. You know that? If you know what some of them invest or have invested in that, in their businesses, believe me, if they close down today, either because they are frustrated as a result of insecurity or they are protesting or anything happens, it will affect the economy a lot mm. because most Nigerians don't fly. They travel by... Mm. And, for example, if I'm going to go to Abuja now, I can't put my account on the road. Most can afford it. <laughs> so, they are more or less drivers of the economy. And I believe government should begin to see this, especially now, this time of the year. We mm. shouldn't allow this, you know, business arm of, you know, eco eco the economy to collapse. If it mm. does, it means a lot. The economy is down already. We, it, it means we further, you know, drag it. You know. Mm. And finally, when we want to look at the, the big picture, what should government do in reaching out to these trans um, transporters? Because it will not go well. If close to the Yota season now, they are now saying they want to down to because of insecurity. I think the government should better take this more serious. Well, it is not about uh, what we should tell them, it's what we should do. Because uh, these people are not interested in uh, anybody saying anything or promising anything because there have been so many uncapped promises in this realm. So it is uh, about what they will do. And what they will do will depend on how far they can travel without any harassment by uh, all these criminals on the road. And I think that uh, it is very, very shameful that people have even been complaining that uh, ah, even when you are traveling to some, say for instance, uh, you, are, you are traveling from Lagos to parts of uh, Southwest, Southeast, South, mm -hmm. South, you see so many police checkpoints. Despite that, you see there is no relief. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it is not about what they will say to them. It's about what they will do to restore confidence in transportation system in Nigeria. I have Tim Lowe calling from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Hello? Yes, thank you for joining us. 
Okay, I'm here with you. Okay, go ahead with your contribution, please. Yes, I'm hearing you, sir. The issue of, yes, I'm with your journalist hands out. The issue of insecurity, the issue of insecurity on this road. I'm hearing, the issue of insecurity on this road is crazy. Last year, I traveled from Lagos through Ibadan, Lokocha, to Abuja. As at the time I go to Lokoja in the evening, around 6.30 to 7, I bought food, and I was told not to pass. Mm. The simple question I asked was, what was the issue? And they say, if you move from that point to Abuja, there are tendencies you might not get there. My cousin was kidnapped a mm. few months ago. He moved from Lagos to Abuja. We knew how much we lost. Two weeks ago, on Lokoja Kaba Road, my wife's uh, sister, the husband, was also kidnapped on that same road. The best way out and the only solution is for these people to go after these kidnappers. Yes, we know that they exist on this particular road, on this particular axis. Like uh, the man from Guardian said, we have gadgets. We can track their calls. But the worst problem we have here is this. And the fears I also have is the communities harboring these people also contribute in one way or the other in the kidnapping. Policing is not just all about the police going out to get information. Yes, the communities are supposed to be part and parcel of those providing information to the police and the security agencies. But are they doing it? That is the question. Thank you, thank you for your contribution, Tumbo. Tumbo called us um, from Lagos. So we are looking at a situation where I think every, everybody, everybody would need to do something, or unless so, someone like me now, I can't, for a long time, I've not been traveling by road, <laughs> by road because it's very, very difficult and dangerous, especially even the southwest axis, when you go to places in on those states, after on those states, you still go to... Oh, it's, 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 it's a nationwide thing you now. So yeah, it's, it's no longer... Nationwide. It used to be north. Yeah. Mm. And Abuja, Kaduna, and all those. It's a nationwide problem nationwide. now. We are talking about the highways. Even in the cities, do you know that, as at yes, if, if you want to feed now, travel around 10, 10, 30, even here in Lagos. You see, who knows? Smashing your car, robbing you, doing everything. Mm. So the problem of insecurity, this government needs to do a lot more. That's mm. why I said what they are doing, they are based, they should see that it's not good enough. Nigerians, that's where they feel. Because they, there's still a lot that needs to be done. Mm. And it is in the interest of everybody, mm. the government, the govern, economy, everything. If you know, they, they win the war against you know, insecurity. And in the, yes, in the long run, uh, you know that there's something which is always uh, an elephant in the room. This community policing they are doing within the framework of uh, federal police in a federation like this of 36 states and look at our landmarks and 774 local governments to get one inspector general of police in Abuja to be commanding, to issuing out uh, commands to uh, 37 now, 37 police commissioners and uh, other area commanders on those things. The structure of the police will have to be tampered with to get this state police so that uh, at the end of the day, let them legalize it and decentralize operations of the police mm. through constitutional review. Mm. Okay, we'll take this breather. When we we'll come back, we'll talk more. Please stay with us. All right, moving on now. Surely the aftermath of the NSAS protests that rocked Nigeria in October may live with us for a long time. An investigative report by CNN on Lekki shooting on the 20th of October that sounded the death knell on the protest has stirred more controversies. While the CNN in the reports alleged that the Nigerian army used life bullets on the protesters during its intervention in the protests, the military insisted that its personnel acted professionally and followed the rules of engagement. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukoburate, said Nigerians are safe with the military. 
Meanwhile, the federal government has also reacted to the reports. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohamed, who addressed the press in Abuja on the issue, said CNN should be sanctioned for irresponsible reporting and misinformation. Let's hear from Alaji Lai Mohamed. Like everyone else, I watched the CNN report yesterday. I must tell you that it reinforces the disinformation that is going around, and it is blatantly irresponsible and the poor piece of journalistic work by a reputable international news organization. CNN engaged in incredible sensationalism and did a great disservice to itself and to journalism. The first instance, CNN, which touted its report as an exclusive investigative report, sadly relied on the same videos that have been circulating on social media without verification. This is very serious, and CNN should be sanctioned for that. CNN merely said the videos were obtained by CNN without saying where from, and whether or not it authenticated them. Were CNN reporters and cameramen at the lucky toll gate that evening? If the answer is no, on what basis were they reporting? Relying on second or third hand information and presenting it as CNN investigations? Why didn't the CNN balance its story by showing the compelling testimony of Brigadier General Taiwo before the judicial panel in Lagos. Is this one-sided reporting what is expected from an international media organization or any serious news organization? If CNN had done this investigation properly, it would have known how fake news and its information were trending during the NSAS crisis. The BBC even did a report on this and will recommend that report to the CNN. Talking about the BBC, a report with the BBC's pigeon service, Damila Banjo. Sorry. Talking about the BBC, a reporter with the BBC's pigeon service, Damila Banjo, was at Lekki Tollgate protest ground that night. She was quoted as saying, soldiers were indeed at the toll gate, but they shot politically into the air and not at the protesters. CNN, that was not at the scene, reported otherwise. In hearing its so-called investigative report, CNN conveniently forgot that on October 23, 2020, it tweeted from its verified Twitter handle that the military killed 38 people when it opened fire on peaceful protesters on Tuesday, October 20, 2020. Less than a month later, the same CNA, in what it called an exclusive report, based on a rehash of old, unverified videos, was only able to confirm that one person died in the same incident. In his journalist reporting, CNN was blind to the fact that six soldiers and 37 policemen were killed in unprovoked attacks. Obviously, CNN did not consider the security agents human enough. CNN, in its investigation, was blind to the so it's saying in this investigation. That's uh, Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohamed. Adekunle Yusuf. There's a part of that report that I saw on CNN that um, spoke about the, the bullets that was used by the military that day, and that bullets coming from Serbia and talking about the particular year 
that was purchased by the Nigerian army. Meanwhile, General Taiwo came to the panel of inquiry to tell Nigerians categorically that they did not use life bullets. What is happening? Oof. Uh, in this instance, uh, crisis, it's so unfortunate. I believe the truth is, is already a casualty. Mm. We killed and buried truth. Mm. And from all the things I've seen so far, all the things I've read so far, all that I've watched, even 200 you know, panels cannot exhume. <laughs> the truth mm. from the grave. We buried it. You mm. see, but let me go to uh, the reactions by the federal government through uh, uh, Alayi Lajman. You know, he's a man some of us respect and uh, admire so much. But totally, I disagree with him on this incident. You should know that he's uh, not a politician now. When he speaks, he speaks for the federal government and CNN. He's not a local, not a Nigerian, you know, media house. You know, in Nigeria, the media houses, we are so timid, you know. I don't want to say we are unprofessional, but we're always so timid that even ordinary a local politician can, you know, harass us, intimidate us, and do all that. But you should go and, go and watch that report from CNN. I guess what the government should have done to say, okay, even though we disagree with so, 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 and so, we will uh, take certain things that we should do and work on them instead of condemning outright and calling for sanction. How do you sanction CNN? You can't fight a global media behemoth and win. CNN is not, you know, Chinese TV or AIT or, the, 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 or TVC. This is a, an investigative report, and if you have anything contrary, that's not the way to go. You know, Premium Times, a you know online publication in Nigeria that is you know massively respected for investigative reporting, mm -hmm. you know launched an investigation into this matter, and in their report they said people were killed. All the things, many things that CNN said were said by our own local, you know, uh, premium times. You understand me? Yes. Of course, you still see, see many people who still come out to say they doubt this, they doubt that. Well, you may, but from government to the army to everybody, you will see that a lot of things, people are working so hard to confuse the public, to hide you know, the truth, yes. to kill the truth and bury the truth permanently. Unfortunately, they are doing a terrible, shoddy job okay. in the sense that every attempt... Every, looking at the bullets, does, 2005, <laughs> that the so, bullets was purchased in Serbia. So when you look at some of them, they didn't know that these days, I'm an investigative journalist, and when I see a good piece of investigative work, I know. Multi-award winning. By the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. <laughs> so what, what I saw, you will see CNN to the extent that they even analyze the video. And there are tools, yes. modern tools now, yes. to analyze video. Yes. So mm -hmm. you can do geo. There are so many things you can do with a video. So you may disagree with because the, 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 the Army Force said when this news broke out, what the Nigerian Army told us was that it was fake news. We started from there, then later the state government, then later they agreed that, oh, we were invited there. And you know all the shifting of grants and the contradictions and all that. So if CNN came out to say, okay, there's need to do an investigative report, and you are faulting them because they were not on the ground when it happened, that doesn't mean that they cannot do an investigative. You can actually, because in this age of, you know, modern, yes at the information technologies, you, there's a lot you can do. And many of these were deployed into that report. And from what I saw, what I expected the government of my country to do is not what Alaji Lai Mohammed was doing. Oh, 
even though we disagree with some of the uh, uh, conclusions in this uh, report, we are going to work on some of the things we need. We need to strengthen and all that. You don't. There is nobody, even in America, where CNN is headquartered. The president and CNN. You know, I mean, this outgoing president. You know, war. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, what happened? You, you cannot win. Because the media house, especially one that is internationally respected like CNN, is like an institution on behalf of the people. They call it a social institution. The government, you come and go. It's not permanent. So I don't, we, I don't think we should continue to you know, have more crises to what we have. What we have had enough, I expect the government of Nigeria to level. Yeah. The Minister of Information actually said that it was, um, th there was nothing like a massacre. It was an internet massacre with nobody, and they didn't have bodies. That anybody that had any proof of fatality should go to the Lagos State um, panel, panel to, to you know state their cases, and you know. And I look at it from what the general said, from the over three hours um, submission he made on the panel and everything. After that one, I was thinking that well. I will, I will tilt towards, you know, believing what the, the army guys said that no, that they did not use life ammunition, people did not die, and that life ammunition, the blank ammo they used, could not cause facility, could only cause body harm, but could not lead to death. And CNN is establishing it that people died. Others, other investigations that have been carried out by Premium Times and some other um, eyewitness accounts people are died. saying people died. So, what are we to believe? <laughs> what do you, we do you, you know, um, uh, my brother, we have a responsibility, especially social responsibility, to defend institutions in our country. But this is, this is totally different from the age of uh, Joseph Goebbels. The, the, <laughs> the World War veteran of propaganda. This is the age of transparency, age of digital journalism. You do not need to go to a particular site before you do forens forensic investigation, as uh, <laughs> my brother said. You know, what would have happened now if this thing had been done by a local television? We've been talking about press freedom in Nigeria, press freedom, this, and I say we should sanction uh, CNN. For, for doing this thing that uh, is fake news. You see, yes, we have a responsibility, but this is a public relations disaster for our own institution. It's a public relations disaster for the army, mm -hmm. even for the federal government. Mm -hmm. In the first instance, General John Enenche, the spokesperson for the army, said it was mm -hmm. fake news. And when, from what uh, uh, we learned, when an, uh, when an uh, American embassy official confronted a very highly placed official, with pieces of evidence, digital evidence, well, of this thing, then they changed that. Uh, yes, we were there, but Lagos State government uh, invited us. And even the La Lagos State governor had already said that somebody died. You were talking about massacre. That story ha had been debunked by even DJ Switch that, no, at no time, as she was quoted from one fake uh, uh, Twitter handle, that, uh, oh, the uh, 68 died, no, that she never said that. She mentioned the number at a particular time and it was broadcast. So the, the issue of uh, uh, discrediting journalism, we want to control social media, we don't want to do this one, it's not there. It's a public relations tragedy that must be handled with care because now they say, oh, this is it's not true, but we have seen bloodshot. We have seen evidence of uh, what really happened. Even the satellite image, and the, I think our duty be us, and people who run modern government should note that this is the age of cloud computing. And most of those things that we see on television now, uh, most of those things pass through so, uh, uh, images that have passed satellite through. Images. Satellite images. Uh, uh, satellite. Google Maps. Uh, uh, yes. yes. Mm. Organs. And mm. you can easily see this thing. You can no see. No need to be even the, the, you, the, the, Are they going to deny? The image they showed of how the, the soldiers, the military moved, how they, how they from moved their, from, uh, how they moved from their from, office. Yes. yes, 
How they moved the, and, the, they, and, the, they and the time. Yeah, and the time. time. The time. They the moved. kind of vehicles they used. Yeah, the vehicle they used and the, and the routes like they passed. This is this this is, this is uh, the age of data journalism. This is the age of digital journalism. Facts hmm. are sacred. As the Google. Yes, hmm. facts are sacred, and then we should deal with the facts. If we need to confess, if this we need to apologize, we need to do that, but not to be debunking uh, 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 video images. To say that, oh, uh, uh, CNN did this work, CNN did that. As the said, Premium Times did that. We, they, they, they had already established this thing. It had already been established before by people who covered this thing. Even AIT covered this thing with life. Oh, we, we, have, we, we have seen all these things. Now, people saw when they were removing camera. It was, it was shown. When they, were, when, when they switched off uh, uh, the, the light from uh, mm. uh, all those things like that, at the toll gate. We've seen all these things before. We had seen before, not before CNN ever came, we had heard the gunshots. And we've seen this in DJ Switch actually uh, recorded so many of these things. You can't discredit some of these uh, 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 digital images that you can easily retrieve. Mm. We know this is, you can't, you can hide this kind of truth in a grave for only three days. Mm. It will not stay there as I keep writing. Mm. And I think that. Uh, we should not discredit journalism this way. Mohammed this is the is age of transparency. Us. Mohammed is calling us from worry. Worry in Delta states. Thank you for joining us, Mohammed. Hello? Hello, Mohammed. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mohammed. Yes. Thank you for hanging out with us. Good evening, Mr. Ayodele. Am I on to you? Yes, yes, yes. Please go, go ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to contribute on this issue of uh, answers and the toll gate, um, the toll gate issue. Go ahead, Thank please. you very much. I, I like the way people have made the analysis there. I think uh, the gentleman by your right hand side made mention sure that we are in a digital world. I like the passion in which he is saying it. But I want to contribute further to say that in this age of digitalization, we too we should also improve in our critical thinking. Because if we are not also improving our critical thinking, the digital world also can also influence us wrongly. Let me take our mind back to 2003. The same CNN reported how that um, late Mama Gaddafi of Iraq all the, 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 the satellite uh, images of where he's having a um, weapon of mass destruction. The same thing today, today, nobody, it has not been confirmed. They've never proven one of weapon of mass destruction. We know what uh, uh, Iraq turned out to become. Okay, Saddam Libya Hussein. also, the same thing. Syria, there was also almost they wanted to use image was also used. But I don't know how smart the Syrian people were. I was following one documentary. I saw where people they said they used uh, chemical weapons to be precise. But the government angle. If I if I should not be, if I should not believe uh, if I should not believe government angle, I should also not believe the other side. I think it will be fair that way. The government angle of Syria also said no. They brought it and they proved it that it was wrong. Another thing quickly, DJ Switch. Mm. No way he has made this okay. comment. Has made, has made this point. This point, yeah. The federal government is asking for those people that look, if Lai Mohammed is coming to tell Nigerians today that no fatality was recorded and he's saying that he's challenging anybody, go to this panel and substantiate your claim if you have any fatality. So why is it difficult to know the number of people that died from lucky shooting? Even when you look at the way the government, I mean the federal government, has undoed the aftermath of the NSAS protest. You as a journalist, I'm coming. from your investigation, yes. can you verify that people died that day? People died. Okay. Read the Premium Times. It said bullets, blood, and death. Untold story of what happened at Lake Litogit. And I knew some of my colleagues that you know 
sank their teeth into the investigation. We knew what we discussed behind the scenes. Not wounded. People died. Even the governor confirmed that somebody died in the hospital. Yes. You okay. say you didn't fire at anybody mm -hmm. then. Are you saying rain or what? What kid the man? Those who are in the hospital, the governor, you know, tried his best. We are saying, let's not be afraid of the truth. Yes. I don't know why we are afraid. So what, um, is, what I was trying to say is the way the federal government has handled the aftermath of the protest. They are going after everybody. Today you are saying people should come out. Who will come out? If I was one of them, I would not come out. Oh. Unless I don't love myself. Okay, the way they've been well, the government has been so freezing vindictive. their accounts. Yes. It has been so dictatorial and vindictive. The federal government. That is not necessary. We are in a moment of crisis. Believe me, you are taking, you, are, you will end up with unintended consequences. I'm saying negative, dangerous consequences. That's what the federal government is doing. You are freezing their account, destroying their businesses, you are doing, collecting their passport. What for? Are you sure at this peaceful protesters, were they the ones that looted? Were they the ones that embarked on killings oh. and burning and all those things? Clearly they are not. But a lot of things happen. If you can get some of those people who looted, who killed, who maimed, fine. Please go and prosecute them. Not those who want a better future for their country and for themselves. And it's a legitimate thing to do. The president said so. The vice president said so. Virtually everybody that was important in Nigeria said so. So now, when you're now saying, uh, they, they, you don't want you, nobody die, no. when you look at the contradictions from the beginning mm. up to now, yeah. mm. that's why I said 200 panels cannot unravel mm -hmm. the truth be, can, mm. because the truth was killed and buried. So 200 panels cannot exhume it. From what I've seen so far, I just believe that. Let anybody, you know, just what we have seen yeah. so far, look at the CNN report. You can fought whatever you want to fought, but it's an investigative piece. This does not mean CNN doesn't make mistakes. This does not mean CNN cannot, you know, lie from what the other man said. You know, when they reported that uh, um, there were weapons of uh, mass destruction, so, 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 that wasn't an investigative, you know, report. It was a propaganda issued directly from the government. Yes that wanted to do certain things. So the government did But this one is an investigative report. And from what they were able to prove here and there, I have not seen any Nigerian you know, media house that has done a percentage of that, apart from the previous times that I quoted. Let's, let's look at this. Um, the October 20 shooting has actually put um, the federal government of Nigeria in a very bad light in the international community because we've seen people reacting. We even had the Joe Biden campaign, you know, release, uh, 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 the press releases and everything. Now CNN has done this now. What should the federal government do to mitigate the damage that has been done to the image of the country? Because Alaji Lai Mohamed is saying that CNN should be sanctioned <laughs> for irresponsible reporting and misinformation. Well, you know, what we are, we are talking about... Who should NBC, sanction CNN, sir? Oh, well, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. NBC. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mean fine, fi Sabi? Fi fi fine, fine, you know. <laughs> they, they can go, you know, the other... Mm -hmm. the, when they were talking about this thing, some people from here, okay. from the Ministry of Information, at that time, not under this government, okay. went to Atlanta, the headquarters of CNN, CNN. to complain about uh, okay. Jeff. Jeff, at that time. Jeff. Yes. Yes, I remember. They, they went, maybe this time around, they will go there to complain to the authorities in CNN, authorities that sent them to... Or, and funded the... The, the investigation. Mm -hmm. the investigation costs a lot of money. And he asked them, he asked them, was CNN, was CNN there yeah. with the camera crew? It's, it's, it's not, they, they don't were, have to they, be there. They were talking about uh, uh, BBC, uh, uh, BBC, BBC World Service, was, and yeah. they were there, they said that they shot, that was what uh, they did at that level. That was the capacity of uh, BBC at that time. And now they have gone into this thing, they've gone for so many days, they have examined all these things, forensic investigation and they unraveled this thing. So what to do is what we're talking about. This is the age of transparency. Mm -hmm. Just tell the truth. Confess your sin and say Apologize. that look away, there was uh, an error and all those things. Okay, how, how do you mitigate the, 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 the testimony 
of okay. the general, General John Enenche, who said it was fake news in the first instance, only for the same army authority to say, really, we were there. The Lagos State government invited or us. Or what the Attorney General and, uh, said. Or what the Attorney General said. So okay. how do you mitigate that? How do you turn that one around? It's and a public relations tragedy that should okay, be Okay, let me take Yakub. Let me take, Yakub is calling us from Lagos. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good evening, Ayo. Good evening, Yakub. Uh, good evening to your colleagues. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. Ayo, I'm um, trying to be corrected. You see, what we read on uh, social media when this incident started is that uh, we always read it, uh, Lekki Massacre. I don't know, as a layman, ordinary citizen, I want you people, as a journalist, to correct me. A word of massacre. Uh, before, the, before, before someone use a word of massacre, how many people could have been tied? That is point number one. You, you should be able to correct me if I'm wrong. Because you, the, the Arabi line, I've been saying this. Yes, I support this government. But in terms of information management of this government, it's, it's so poor. There is no doubt about it. I agree with you. Then... Now, for the fact that the information is so poor, now the Alaji Lai Mohammed Information Minister is now challenged Nigerian citizens. If you know that anybody dies in that toll gate, please come out. I disagree with one of your colleagues that the truth has been killed. I don't think so. God forbid, if I didn't mean I lost one of my family, I would not hesitate to come out to tell you that the Nigerian government, yes, this is my relative die. The people, the living people in that protest cannot be able to come and maybe they are fear of some certain thing. But if you lost your family, your colleagues, your, your brother in that kind of a situation, you should not be able to afraid of anybody. Yes, thank you, Yabu. Yaku, you made a valid point there. Yes, because he made a, he made these a valid people point. died. Where are the families of those people? He made, they should come out. He made, he saying, he they should made not a, be afraid he of made a valid point. This but I always try to say something. I will not use massacre. There's no need for that word. But please, don't quantify human lives. One person kid is bad enough. Hundred, bad enough. So you don't you don't have to kill one million people before we start talking. You understand me, especially when we are talking That's about it's good to be on the safe side. Unarmed protesters. Lekki shooting. You understand not me? Massacre. Um, yeah. So I don't. I I hate to play on the word that it's not massacre. People died. Hmm. Even if it's one, you cannot quantify the life of any human being. It was not, it wasn't necessary. Go and read. It was avoided. Go and read the Premium Times report. They mentioned names. Go to the yeah. CNN thing. They mentioned names. Okay. I will be happy to now say, oh, this name you mentioned and where you said, and it didn't happen. So because you cannot say, oh, show me the dead body, does, does that mean nothing happened? Please, we should stop. Be afraid of the truth. Why are we so afraid? Something happened. And we must acknowledge that something happened. People make mistakes. Let's apologize and move on. Martin Zin. Don't let us internationalize this crisis. Yeah. That's what we are trying to do now. Yeah. Martin, in your newsroom, how close are you to this lucky shooting, as in from your findings, from your reporters and people on ground? Well, definitely, it is the same thing with... with we, we found and we examined all those things. We even published uh, some of those initial findings uh, in one of our weekend editions. That we, 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 are, we, can, we can contend, we can say, oh, they used the word massacre. That's what I said, that they said the people who used that one, that nobody had that one directly from DJ Switch and others who said that, that uh, the word massacre was wrong. But it should not be used to explain. Even the one that, that uh, this popular one, they say, Black Lives Matter, that rocked the United States. How many policemen actually uh, uh, died? Only one. The death of one person diminishes the rest of us. That's what Shakespeare said. The death of one person like that. And I think that uh, they have mentioned the names in this matter. Somebody has said that uh, they called his mother. One woman is said to be in hospital, as we speak, when they heard that uh, his own son died, and they have not found that son. Today, before coming into this place, I, I listened to a news report from Lagos Corona that the people should come and identify dead bodies, dead bodies from 19th uh, from October, October to 27th of October. 27th of October. This event happened on 20th of October. Let's actually wait for... For, for that one too, because we have not had this kind of announcement in the mix. Hmm. This one has uh, actually come to compound uh, uh, the, the conundrum that we 
are <laughs> trying to unravel. And it is mm. even, and it is not even the best thing for us to conclude okay. because yes. there's a panel there's that, a panel is, that is sitting in Lagos to unravel these things. Okay. So unless we, we want to tell guide yes. the panel, which is not fine. Okay. Ah. We sign off from our entertainment um, station wrap. You can join us on DSTV four one eight, Go TV forty five, and our other platforms across the world. So we'll be back after this time out. Welcome back, and we are looking at the 20th of October shooting and the um, lucky shooting and this investigative report by the Cable Network News that uh, CNN on the lucky shooting. Gentlemen, our last take on this because this has added a fresh dimension. I've seen stories from BBC, I've seen stories from other uh, international medium, but the one of CNN yesterday has um, raised a fresh perspective. A fresh perspective in the sense that if a general in the Nigerian army came out and I so much respected his intelligence and the way he went about his presentation, came out to tell us that no, that they did not use life ammunition. And I took that word and I said, well, we can now start unraveling what happened in Lekki Target. But this dimension of CNN, they went ahead to show us the... The, the, the ammunition that were used, yes. who made them when they were born. 2005, when they were born. This is worrisome. This is an investigative report. As far as I'm concerned, it should be applauded. CNN went further. We've been talking about military involvement. They went further that after military rebellion, the police came for another round of assault. You understand me? And you are saying they didn't know what they were saying. Believe me, in this age and time, there are so many things you can monitor from millions of miles away from you yes. through these gadgets. Yes. And we are talking about people who control the gadgets. We are concerned. We just use this. <laughs> there are a lot of things we don't we don't know about this. Those who made this know a lot that we don't know. This is not to say CNN is infallible. What I am expecting my government, the federal government of Nigeria, to do is not this one. You don't confront a media a global media, you know, giant like CNN. Look at watch CNN now. CNN has moved from Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. It's now Nigeria, the shooting, lucky kid, yeah, whatever. You understand me? Now, Alaji Mohammed has helped them to give to new to provide a fresh perspective. What's the perspective? The federal government, you know, of Nigeria has called for sanction against CNN because it's a fake news, it's a biased report, it's, it's a piece of bad journalism. Please, you are a government. And because you are in government, there are a lot of things you must do or you must not do. In this way, in this way, I expect the federal government to tone down a bit. Mm. Yes, you have to tone down. Oh, there are a lot of things we disagree with in the report because we are government. But because our investigative panel is ongoing, we won't want to but to insist and continue to insist that this didn't happen, this didn't happen. The same military that said live ammunition were not used, first of all said they never were, they were never there. Uh -huh. I won't believe that kind of you know organization again in, in this matter. At the point in time, it was uh, the alleged moment went for that to even commend the conduct of the Nigerian army and the police. Yes. That in, in the face of provocation, that they acted professionally. Well, definitely. Uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed is a veteran information officer. We respect him for that. He works for the government. And what we, the classical definition of news is this something, it's a report of something somewhere, somebody somewhere is trying to hide. And the rest of them is advertising. Report what somebody somewhere is trying to hide. That's investigative. Reporting. That is, yes, that's <laughs> journalism. And what they have done is a piece of good journalism. What somebody somewhere, somehow, 
He's been trying to hide. That is the definition of Evans, who just died now. And it's a classical definition of news. Something, somebody somewhere is trying to hide. The rest is advertising. That's what they have just done. Alaji Nayi Mohammed is doing his job as the information minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And journalists are doing their job to bring out a report on something somebody somewhere has been trying to hide. Okay, we are going to stay on this story. I'm going to stay on this story because we are going to have, we, I'm sure days ahead we'll have fresh perspective yes, from everybody, from the international media, from CNN, and even from the federal government. We'll stay on that story to you, uh, update you with fresh developments. Now, the governor of Bayelsa State, Doye Diri, is a happy man. A unanimous judgment by his seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by Justice Sylvester Nguta, dismissed the last batch of cases against him and his deputy, Lawrence Kujuako. Now, rather than being vindictive, Governor Diri has extended the only branch to those that filed petitions against his election at the tribunal. He says that the litigants are neither his enemies nor those of the states as they were just exercising their rights. He went further to even compare what's happening in the um, Biasa state to what's happening in the United States of America, that Trump is in court and he has a right to go you know, to court and uh, they've uh, exhausted all. I think this is the end of the road for anybody that wants to uh, contest the governorship of um, Biasa state. Yeah. You are right. After the uh, Supreme Court verdict. If you look at the cases of all along, no merit, no grounds. But politicians, they are like dreamers. There's nothing that is impossible in their dictionary. <laughs> they believe anything can be done. You remember that uh, this governor didn't even win the election in the first place. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was the EPC uh, candidate that won. Very painful exercise. You know, but, you know and the EPC, uh, the, the in court, governor elect and deputy governor elect at the time, they were already rehearsing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the, 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 the pictures of the rehearsals were all over the all over media. The committee, inaugurator <laughs> committee has been <laughs> set up. Yes. So, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And, uh, you see, uh, everything was going well, everything was fine, everything was perfect. But all of a sudden, just within Hours. Minutes you are talking about. Everything crashed. Hmm. Irreparably. Hmm. So what happened? The man, you know, because of his own, I mean, deputy governor elect by the court of our land, I mean, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, who had a K leg in his certificate and hmm. everything. Hmm. So it affected, and the boat, they crashed. So now, the next person will take over the the spoils and that's what brought the governor Diri, you know into that's government that's house that's and uh, some people felt that uh, that's unfair they are not going to let that <laughs> so all so, of so they now started strategizing across parties you know politicians they are for them. so mm -hmm. they now have to do okay this is a loophole they said I neck you know uh, they said his deputy governor did not have um, the discharge certificate of NYC that is <laughs> in, uh, in, they in, also in, just, you see you know and NYC came out and let so, me tell you maybe some people didn't know what they call Supreme Court they won't they won't overturn there it's not going to happen they will look at every angle before they come out don't you know what it means it's like when God speaks that's final mm. the Supreme Court so Okay, did it, it happened in Sokoto, it happened in other places, looking for, uh, by, okay, it happened in uh, Imu, looking for behind the scene, you know, <laughs> <laughs> loopholes to just... But turn itself. These are wise men. Of course, they can make mistakes, but if, when they do, that mistakes, that's, it will be permanent. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that, <laughs> it, it will be permanent. Many people who didn't understand, we think that, oh, let me go and get my lawyer. Well, well you have, um, you know, resources to throw around but the lawyers we always Ecology. because lawyers want to make money yeah. there is no hopeless case 
in the hands of any lawyer. I mean, good lawyers. No matter how bad that, that case is, they will tell you. Well, you they, can, they can just make a man and turn into a woman. They can turn to... <laughs> and politicians always believe them. There's no way, I keep saying it, anybody will expect the Supreme Court to turn around and nullify its, its own judgment. ruling. Mm. Its own ruling on an, the same issue is not going to happen because it will make a mockery of the Supreme Court itself, the judgment that comes out of you know, the place. So there are a lot of things people need to understand. Then going back to this governor, I didn't even know it can be this kind of having this kind of spirit because I love people like this in our you. policy. You see, uh, at a point when some people took over power and they started gloating, I would defeat you. Then uh, you remember the former uh, APC chairman would be beating, changing, well, well, I bury you particularly. I'll put him. Those are not good. Those are not good things for our politics because when you win. As President Muhammadu Bari is always saying, you should be magnanimous even in victory, so that you don't make the loser, you know, to feel bad. That's politics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the same spirit, and he has spoken well. Mm. The only thing we appeal to him is to work well. Work well mm. because... Uh, Sap well. Yes, Sap he should well. well. <laughs> <laughs> Go if, you, way. if you are a, a, a servant leader, <laughs> serve well. Yes. Then he has spoken well, and uh, definitely, as we have always said, he even in the context of uh, this NSAS thing, there is power in the world that people use. That at this time of pain, or this time of poor economy, at this time of uh, this thing, you need words that minister grace to the people. We need people to talk about reconciliation, not division. We need people who, who speak, and then people, begin, you, you see, to, to lessen pain of people at this time, not to be, you're a leader. If some people say you're not going to be something and God has enabled you, and you are there, then you give the glory to God and call people together. That you don't need to be vindictive, you don't need to uh, be saying anything that will make people to die at this time. You, yes, you need words to minister grace to people that uh, will lessen the, the pain of people all over the place. So the, the governor has spoken well, but as I said, the governor should go and serve well. Because now after, uh, after all the, the litigation, there is governance. As governors, and we, we discuss this regularly here that too many governors in this country are not doing well. Only very few are doing well. Very few. We can count on our fingertips. Only very mm. few. So he should join the, the very few to mm. serve the people of Bayesa State. Mm. Finally, the senior security staff in the Nigerian embassy in Germany has been suspended for allegedly soliciting for sex from a woman before renewing her passport in a viral video. The suspension came after a footage of the officer identified as Mr. Martin, not my own Martin Oloja, <laughs> was caught with <laughs> his pants down in a hotel room. He, he had allegedly asked for the unnamed lady to have sex with him before he could release her passport for her. The embassy says that it has begun investigation into the matter with the urgency and diligence that the situation demands. Adekunle, so what's this about? Uh, you know, when it comes to sexual allegations, these are very, very difficult things to prove. But there's an allegation, and the only way you can go is to investigate. This doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It may have happened, it may not. But I love the way it is being handled in the sense that suspend the man, then carry out investigations. Let the outcome of the infidings you know, lead to whatever you want to do. You may not say the allegations are true, or you may not say they are true until there's an investigation. But it is sad that this is happening because the image of our country is at stake, and uh, it's not a local matter now. <laughs> we can't call it a local matter. It's already in the international media, and mm. anything that has to do with sexual harassment, sexual mm. exploitation, it always ignites, you know, uh, interest uh, around the world, especially mm. in civilized societies. Mm. So 
the way we are going, perfect way. If we didn't lose, you know, our, we didn't lose it, but we are going the right way. But I can tell you for sure, uh, Martin, that it's very difficult to renew your passports if you are outside of Nigeria. Most Nigerians go through hell before they travel from their base or where they are to, let's say, in the United States, you have, um, you have one office in um, New York. Yes. I think you have another office in Washington. Washington yes. Do you understand? So people from Dallas, people from, you know, other states, they have to come to either New York or Washington, and they have to spend days. Some will be subjected to a lot of hardship before yes. they get their passport renewed. Yes, definitely this, this is it, and this is uh, one dirty meaning, one of our dirty meaning that we have to watch in the public. As you said, it's an allegation, but again, it's another trial for the social media. But the vi the, this video went viral yesterday. I saw it, and they were talking about uh, this man. They got the man in a, a hotel uh, a facility. Uh, the, it's, it's an allegation now. They are investigating it, but this is another trial, and uh, it's not a good story about us just passport to collect passport. That uh, you, that it, it's not a big deal. Let's wear about everything about us. There is not one good story about us. Even with this one, I say it's an allegation. But uh, saw the face of the man is talking, and people were talking to the man, and uh, they, they caught, they, they didn't know that they recorded him. But mm. this is just not about that man. It's about mm. Nigeria. It's about our country. Yes. It's about mm -hmm. our country. Another bad story about our country. Mm. Just to collect passport. To collect mm. anything here is a problem. Mm. To collect visa there for even anybody is a problem. To collect, you know, we had had re, uh, reports of uh, riots even at the uh, uh, Nigerian High Commission mm. in, uh, in in UK there. Mm. And all this is not a good story that we should even stay on because it shows us that really w there is not one, not, not one part of our story is good. It's complementary. <laughs> just, just scandalous stories about us in business, in politics, and even in social affairs. And uh, I think it's not a good story. We need some uh, uh, reorientation, yes. reorientation about the way mm. we are. Because at the end of the day, attitude matters, mm. and the people will continue to deal with us because of the power of our attitude. Okay, I have a call. Additional is calling us from Lagos. Thank you for joining um, us, Shino. Thank you, uh, my brother. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. I want to thank all of you for doing a wonderful job. And you, I'm sure today, thank you. those who came to TBC and burnt it down will regret the action. Because we are doing public service duties. Mm. This is the TBC people never expected to say the truth as it is. Mm. This is the TBC that people think because the ownership belongs to APC, we will not be able to say the truth. I am happy this has been dispelled today. Now, to the matter, mm -hmm. the issue of this answers, you have talked about the whole thing, and the truth is hanging in our faces. Minister Naim Mohamed is doing his job, but he should not throw it in the face of journalists. I'm sorry, journalists, by, their, by, by, by virtue of their work, are supposed to be opinion molders. They will not go and manufacture, you know, the truth. The truth will always be there for everybody to see. We are talking about CNN doing this and CNN doing that. I mean, is the video they are showing, are they not true? The Instagram live the DJ switch run, I watch it. Don't we see somebody's body being opened up to remove bullets? Is that rubber bullet? The governor who went around hospitals that night and claimed only two people died. Are you saying the governor is telling lies? The video of the governor in many hospitals around Lekki, we saw it. The governor went around and saw people who were injured. In fact, there was a video of one of them who was alleged to have even stolen the phone of one of the nurses. Was it Robert Bullet that perforated his leg? Mm. What? Thank you, Shino. Sorry, we lost him. We lost questions. Him. Thank you, Shino. Thank you for your recommendation. Uh, and, um, vital questions. Yes, we, we're still on that story. Okay. I want to thank you, Martin Oloja, 
Thank you so much for your contribution. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And Kunleshi himself, Adekunle Yusuf. I'm always glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for always being there for us. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11. And we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzuwaku. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>